Welcome back, everyone, and happy Halloween. We're following oh, up my from penis our... Boobs. Okay, our Super Nintendo <laughs> Clock Tower review. We're following up with a Wonderswan review. Das Wunderswan! Wunderswan. Oh, Clock Tower. It was ported to the original Wonderswan, the black and white one. I'm doing my kegels right now. This game is basically the same as this game right here, except this one's black and white, the Wonder Swan and version. This one's gray and black. And it's, but there are some minor differences. Uh, but let's go ahead and start fresh with the story. We've been drinking. So the We've story. Been a lot today, guys. The story is exactly the same as the Super Nintendo game. Sure. So. If you're not a terrible fan, you already know what we're talking about because you saw the last video. But if you are a terrible but fan. But if you are a terrible fan, I will show you some sympathy. Talking about you, Jessica. <laughs> the basic premise here is we are orphans. We're or orphans. And it's mostly because you didn't watch our last video. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our matron, Ms. Mary, brings us to this fabtabulous mansion to start a new life, not in a shitty orphanage. Yes. Right? Unfortunately, Ms. Mary goes missing, mm -hmm. and I, Jennifer, go, go to find her, and hear screaming, and everybody else has disappeared now. It just all goes to hell from there. Yep. And mm -hmm. you have to figure out why you're there, you have a familiar connection to that location, mm -hmm. and you're being chased by the Scissor Man, which is based off of... Scissor Me Timbers. <laughs> based the off burning. of the, the Burning. The That's Burning. That's like, what, 1981? Yes. Oh, 1981 film. If you're planning to go camping. So one of the greatest differences between the Super Famicom and the Wonder Swan version is, of course, the graphics and presentation. Yes. You know, this isn't the Wonder Swan color. It would have been awesome on the Wonder Swan color. I always say that in all my Wonder Swan reviews, it would have been so great. But of course, the Wonder Swan black and white version existed beforehand, and that's what got the port. So of course, it is a black and white version of the game. On the one hand, it sucks because you don't have color. On the other hand, it's a horror game, and it's kind of creepy in black and white. Yeah. So. I would say the thing that really rustled my jimmies with this was that there was a lower frame rate for a lot of the stuff. Like, when you went into the shower and you saw the dead body and then mm -hmm. the scissor man came out. The cinematics. When I was playing this, it was like of like the both of you walking out of the room and I was like, holy shit. Come on. Why is there slowdown? This is like nothing. Like, it yeah. took quite a bit to get out of that room. Yeah. And the, for those of you that don't know, the Wonder Swan is a 16-bit system, but it is a handheld. It's obviously less powerful mm -hmm. than the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. So, like I mentioned, the black and white graphics, I actually kind of enjoyed. I, I didn't hate them. They were yeah. still very, very crisp. Much crisper than, like, a Game Boy oh, certainly. game would look. But, like, I felt that the color differences in the hallway was just the only thing that was giving me any sense of direction in the Super Nintendo game, and without yes. that, I was completely lost yeah, on the Yeah, there was Wonder no Spawn. map. We mentioned very difficult. in the Super Famicom version that there was no map. There should have been a map that populated as you went, and there wasn't, so it just became all the more difficult, more all the more easy to get lost, especially for beginners. Oh, yeah. In mm -hmm. the Wonder as Swan version. We are. Yes. But, otherwise... I think that it looked quite good. I, I agree. And I still like the aspect of, you know, I still like what they did with the music. Mm -hmm. You know, there basically wasn't anything other than footsteps. Just clump, 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 clump. And then as soon as you're being chased, to some degree, it's a testament to what the Wonder Swan could do, even in the black and white. They didn't call version. it the Wonder Swan for nothing. That's true. That was a wonderful swan. That's fair enough. And granted, Swans really only come in black or white. There's no other colors for a swan. That's true. Now, let's move right into gameplay. Now, of course, in this game, you are looking for clues. You're trying mm -hmm. to avoid the Scissor Man from totally destroying you. Uh, what did you guys think about it? I'm still not sold on the point-and-click game mechanics with... Yeah. Uh, D-pad, but I thought it was a little bit smoother than on the Super Nintendo. The cursor moved a little bit more slowly, and it wasn't mm -hmm. as finicky about hitting those hot spots. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't right. jittery, yeah. Okay. Another thing about the Wonder Swan version that's kind of nice is that 
you know, it stays on the same side of the screen. So if you're running from room to room while you're being chased, you don't have to remove it from left to right or mm -hmm. right to left. If it's already on one side, you'll pass through the room. The cursor will still be on right. that side. You'll pass through the room, so on and so forth. So you can really traverse right. a little bit quicker. Do it the right way. Keep it front to back. Yes. Yes. That's right. App yes. Another great thing about the Wonder Swan version. Searching. Richie. He's singing Snakey. Another great thing about the Wonder Swan version that was. I give my. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. And he's a really good singer, too. And nobody Snake Eater can deny. Baltica. Face. Mine. Grammar and sentence structure. <laughs> One of the great things about the Wonder Swan version that's really a godsend is the stairs. Like, it just oh, does yeah. this thing where it kind of fades to black. Yeah, like a little cut scene instead of yeah. having to slowly, god awfully slowly. Oh my lord. Oh. I Turn. wish I could get that in my real life. Yes. The stairs are such a pain in the ass. You just walk a couple steps and suddenly you just black out until you're at, <laughs> and then you're at the top and you're like, oh wow, oh, that was that. easy. <laughs> Otherwise, a lot of people consider the Wonder Swan somewhat of an inferior port just due to, like you said, it's not as strong of hardware. So there's some suffering from there. It doesn't have color. There's right. some suffering there. And we there. don't speak the Doki Doki, so there's no translation in it. Of course. Ruins. And of course, you have to keep in mind that this is also in Japanese, right? So, right. you know, you either need a guide mm -hmm. or you need to have already played the game in English to really understand. Or just but I feel to you call don't... it an inferior port is kind of unfair. Mm -hmm. It's... It's the Wonders one. It's a handheld system. This was not the age of the iPhone, Android, yeah. power portable. Yeah. It was an inferior system. Mm -hmm. it did the very port well. did it a did. damn good job for what it was working with. Yeah. It was the same game, essentially. Really. Right. Yeah. And that's a testament to how decent of a port it was. And yes. I agree. I think, you know, a lot of the reviews I read online reflect what I had mentioned. But. I mean, look at this thing. So what Get do we all think of this port of Clock Tower for so, the first one? I, I think I give it a seven and a half, just like I gave the Super Nintendo version. It's a really impressive port given the limitations of the Wonder Swan. Mm -hmm. I would have liked color, I would have liked English, but mm -hmm. they right. did a great job. I, sure. don't, I don't feel that the color really detracted from the game. The English did, because yeah. you can't get any anything what's going on. You don't get the dialogue, you don't get the storyline. You're just walking around aimlessly, trying not to die. Other than that, it's a pretty powerful system. It played pretty nice. I don't think it was that much slower, and I really liked the cutscenes for the stairs. I would still give it a seven, but I would just throw out the recommendation that if you're a Wonderswan owner and collector, definitely get this game. If you've never played Clock Tower before, don't start with this game. Right? Yeah. I'm actually going to give it a slightly higher score oh, than I did on the other. Oh. Unfortunately, it does have the language hurdle, so it is genuinely like, mm -hmm. only if you're playing through again. I think the replay isn't so bad on this, but movement. So much more fluid. So much more, like, the running, you'll fly through stuff. Like, during that one couple of scenes that I did, it was a little choppier, but it was like, Going up and down the stairs yeah. didn't, you weren't like, do I want to take the time to go upstairs? I know it was I a 30 stuff, second but, commitment to go yeah, up the stairs. It the... was a lot of time. That adds up. They took yeah. out some of the it's tedium. a 20 year commitment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They took out yeah. some of the tedium. Thank you very much for watching our review of Clock Tower on yes. the Wonder Swan. We hope you all have a Wonder Swan full. Halloween. Did you get the get one I did there? I see it. Yeah, it was yeah, it was, you put wonder uh, in front yeah, of Halloween. Yeah, exactly. So uh, enjoy yourselves. Wonder, wonder so, Swan. Wonder Swan Hagen Das and Halloween Das and Hagen Das. Mm. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more H4G game reviews, don't forget to subscribe to see new episodes every week. And for those interested, we have just started a brand new Patreon page. 
definitely check it out. We're working on some great perks and rewards for you guys. Links are in the description below.